Hello, and welcome to Jujitsu Kai Quest. I'm Jim. I'm Sam. And this is the Jujitsu Kaisen anime only podcast <laughs> thing that we do. Sam and I are anime only. We're finally, we've entered the Shibuya event. The most hy- hyped up arc that I see people talk about a lot. Yeah, out of like all shonen arcs, like it is one. It's Every, a, it's a very recent one that people talk about a lot. It's like yeah, it's up there. I guess like a lot of people talk about when like I mean, we think of shonen, you think of like the one particular arc, like a like I right in the hard time think of like uh, the Sasuke retrieval or the no, the, the Chuni exams or like you know uh-huh. those those arcs are like you know, Hunter Hunter, Chimera, Ant. You think of right yeah. away, and this is the one that everyone brings up with uh, regarding Jujutsu Kaisen. So one. we've watched the first two episodes of this. Yes, correct. Yeah, what are they episodes? episodes I guess total is thirty and thirty one. But the first one we're talking about is called "It's Like That," which is just kind of like catching back up with our crew and then the lead up for like the second episode essentially Mm -hmm. so yeah we're back in uh present day present time you know we see our 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 cast of characters megumi yuji and nabara yeah so we got kind of like a little after after being gojo pilled (laughs) for like the the past arc (laughs) uh we we got like kind of a little reintroduction to them hanging out and i really love this little gag that's set up where um nanami wait no what's his name yuji no, the girl. Nibara. I mean, the black-haired one. Megumi. Megumi. <laughs> I said the girl. I don't know why I said the girl. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Um, Megumi does this funny thing where he's like, all right, we're done for the day. Like, I'm just going to fucking go home. And they're like, all right, bye. And they even call him back later, which is so funny. Yeah, but hey, Yuji wants to go see Earth Human Earthworm 4, which is just like, I give it the actually made animation for this. They like really went ham for that for some reason. Of Yeah, of like a ro- bit- forbidden romance between woman and human in a worm. Yeah, he gets uh he gets like mutated. He becomes meat, if you know meat from any of the, the vine sauce. He reminds <laughs> me a lot of uh the worm guy from Hunter Hunter. I don't know if you remember. I don't remember him. Uh in the um York New Arc early on there's like the there's like a an unimportant like a uh, squad of guys who all have like weird animal powers. Oh, that, I vaguely remember. And them. there's one guy that's a worm guy, and he literally like penetrates the ground, and he's like all naked, and it, he dies really quick. It's kind of funny. <laughs> um, he reminded me of that, but yeah. So they have this really like elaborate scene where Yuji's like explaining it to Nabora, saying like, "Oh my god, we have to go see the new Human Earthworm movie," <laughs> and yeah, like he gets married. He falls in love with a woman. I think his name's Kevin. <laughs> Thanks. No, no, Kevin's the guy that kills Kevin's him. Kevin's the guy that kills him. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the love is forbidden, so they... He gets murdered by angry villagers. By a baseball bat, which is very funny to which, me. But then the horrifying worm children come out there. That was actually really dis- dis- disturbing. <laughs> it's great. And as I said, it's very funny how elaborate it is, but, you know, she's... I'm going to go shopping instead, you Nabora's, know. you know, women in my... <laughs> women be shopping. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, is she getting paid for being a jiu-jitsu school um she's from the country her neighbor moved away i don't think she gets money from that yeah i don't know maybe she has a, a side job maybe she works at juness but we see a a girl is spying on them almost hit by a car yeah she's she's doing the classic oh um oh i can't go talk to them oh um and then she yeah she almost gets hit by but a car. cut away we get the boy toto and may may her that playing you know well first off they talk about like oh these are the people we want to get promoted which is like our our main crew panda and uh maki yeah which so last season i remember that was kind of like a big thing during the second half they were discussing that in order to even be like promoted into a uh what is it grade one you need to have like she- essentially you need to I have, think it was yeah. You need to have like two uh, letter call that like, re- letter of recommendations essentially. <laughs> yeah, you need to have two approvals from two existing ones. Which is funny because in my mind I was like, oh well, yeah, we've got Gojo and we've got uh, Nanami. But no, they they kind of throw a little curveball yeah, with, Ma- with Toto and Meimei here. Yeah, well, Toto's gonna like like uh, if if I want to make my bro happy, I got I gotta get you know, upgrade his his friends as well. <laughs> was like, no, but yeah, Meimei was there a little. We saw a little bit of her action in like the the end of the arc. Basically, we, it was a, a glimpse of, oh, here's what they can do. We're going to cut away after we see a guitar or an axe. Like, mm-hmm. we get teased. But, yeah, I think Togi's the only one out of that grade and Mekumaru that were, like, left out of the promotions. Mm-hmm. Mekumaru did job out, and Togi, I guess, is his ability is just, like, I guess. Oh, and who's the Momo? Was Momo the witch girl? Oh, yeah. She, yeah. But that was that was a different school, though. 
They were the Kyoto school. Yeah, they were the Kyoto school with uh, Maki's sister, my, uh, her, and oh, and the blood yeah. dude. Yeah, okay. The, For some the... reason, I thought Toto is part of that school. Wait, isn't Toto part of the Kyoto school? He might be. I don't. Oh, think... I can't think about this too long. There's too much about Jujutsu Kaisen that I don't quite understand. But, we need to move on. Yeah, but and and the, and the blood dude. But I guess maybe not. I don't know. He Toto can do whatever the fuck he wants. I don't. He, he... Kind of. That <laughs> seems like the. So the big thing here is that. And we saw why his teacher literally like ruining a man's life and becoming a villain, but just saying, but that's just a theory. <laughs> like literally, like. Um. So but yeah. They, so yeah. They they also have like an elaborately animated fucking ping pong. May May's design is peak. Why? Just why do they do? Okay, like let's talk about. Maybe they were afraid that the first episode wasn't hype enough. So they were like, all right, we need to have an extremely well animated worm man. And then also <laughs> let's put like a month of our, our fucking animators time onto just this this uh I mean, ping pong these, fight. <laughs> these two episodes have like crazy animation stuff going on. Yeah, so. episode two went crazy. It's and not even episode two, this is episode two of the new arc. We already had a crazy animation with the Gojo true. arc. That's true. We, I mean yeah. We had literal like Dragon Ball Z battles going on last yeah, I was I was analyzing <laughs> as as if it was like as, the first episode was, of season and it's was, not. It's like episode Seven, five, what no four i mean we did get a three week break in between the arcs That's true. i think it was three or four week that kind of makes a lot of sense actually now think about <laughs> it but yeah so i just like this little scene and the funny little kind of reveal uh is that uh because toto and and may may nominated these people they are not allowed to participate in their their promotion missions essentially yeah yeah exactly so and which toto is bummed out about because he loves yuji <laughs> his bro his brother and yeah so that's how she wins, <laughs> by destroying him emotionally. So Man. that makes me... Th- that really sets it up that Toto and Mei Mei are kind of on the track to be, like, really big characters this season. Because we know that... <laughs> going by the OP. Well, yeah, that and also we know that they're not going to be paired up with Yuji, uh, Megami, or um, Nobora. So we yeah. know that there's going to there's gonna have to be something with them to justify this whole scene. So they're going to have to go with, like, the people that didn't get selected, maybe, or the, some jobbers or new characters. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. I'm I, I'm excited to see Mei Mei what she does with her axe because all I know is that she has a she giant does have fucking a gigantic axe. axe. So yeah, we catch up with uh, with our, East the girl Nobara and the girl, and she. What's her name? Is her name? Uh, I I forget. It Yuko. On... Oh, it's Yuko. Yuko okay. o- Ozawa. Ozawa is what I kept saying. Okay, yes. yeah. So Yuko. Yes, and as we see our track record with new female possible love interests, they do not have a good track record. Yeah, she'll probably die. <laughs> yeah, going from how Gojo's, uh, that girl, that whole arc went. Wait, which one? <laughs> Remember in the Gojo flashback where the girl who was going to be sacrificed and then they did the whole thing oh, of them like yeah. befriending her and then and getting her brains blown out in front of the girl. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the other girl, the uh, the the healer girl, but because I was like, oh no, she's still no. around. She's just depressed. She's just um yeah so the whole thing here is that she shows her a picture of her from i would you say six months ago yes and she okay so anime does not do a good job with people who are fat uh they always are bad it's always we like talk about this, we, we talked about this in like our fully Cooly podcast where like there was a fat character in like the third yes. season and like the joke is always that they're they like to eat and they're fat yes that was and that is like Basically, I cannot think of almost any example of an anime where there is a character who is overweight that is, is not a joke that also, they're overweight. Also, you cannot make us watch Fully Cooly four, season four and five. I did not know season four was actually out and done. Sam, you're the one that started this. You're contractually <laughs> obligated. I, I'm not sure if we can watch the one featuring the thing. And that one looks really bad. <laughs> and okay, we can't talk one. about that. But, I don't want to talk about it. But so... <laughs> yeah, anime does a really bad job with with overweight characters. They're always a joke. Yes, very rarely are they done. And in this, it's I would say it is still kind of a joke. It's still kind of a joke that she was able to go from being overweight to now. Oh my god, she's hot and tall. I've been thinking of like, oh wow, Dragon Ball Z when they do a, the fat fusion and they just they're just fat falling oh, yeah. out and and fart. And I'm thinking like, I'm like, there's I'm trying to think of like other shonen. I think like fat characters. I think like. Just Cho- any. Choji was fat, but he, his gimmick was literally like, I need the calorie because my technique to just use the calories. I had to thin up if I used it all. But I do love that kind of gimmick of like, okay, I have to eat because my ability. Like the Flash kind of. Like, yes. I know that's the thing with the Flash. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so they, I mean, I would say it's not too bad. And they kind of play into like the, what's the word? The bullying is kind of part of her arc, which is not new to Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu no. Kaisen always has like some kind of bullying. We had a school shooter arc. 
Yeah, there's always some kind of bullying. <laughs> Even in the movie, um, in, in Zero, uh, what's his face? Yeah, is the, uh, bullied the... in the beginning, and then his curse uh, just kills him. <laughs> just mercilessly kills the bullies. Yeah, even that, just like him being like not accepted either because of his like crazy ass curse, I guess, attached mm. to him. So, yeah, so we have this kind of meeting, and this is actually kind of a cute scene. But she was short and chubby, but now she's tall as hell, as we noticed, because she towers over Nobara. Yeah. Also, okay, one other thing, too, before we jump off the fat talk. Like, <laughs> in anime, it is obviously, like, stylized, and it's going to over over-exaggerate. So, are we supposed to think that she's, like, chubby? Because the way she's drawn, she looks, like, morbidly obese. It, I guess. It, it looks like the, she's, like, it, actually, like, 350 pounds. In that, yeah, she's... And then, like, the joke is like, aha, six months, that was six months ago. Now I'm tall and skinny. It's like, I think it was just supposed to be that she was a little chubby and the Japanese beauty standards, like, overemphasize weight to an extent they where they do. would say, oh, my God, look at this land whale. Like, but at, le- but at least this one, she wasn't treated like that. Like, I think of, like, horrible treatment of, like, fact, I think a Persona 4 had that one, that one classmate, if you remember, that, like, harass uh yes oh my god i forgot and about her she, and the joke was she's just fat and ugly and she sits on and you know hits on yosuke yeah. like yeah it's it's i mean it's always almost bad i can't that is probably one of the like the most like prolific like really bad and like the you know they couldn't change it in like the when you hear it du- like you dubbed over like that it's it gets really bad. Yeah, Persona Persona is no stranger to having like some of the worst choices uh Fucked imaginable up. when it comes to characters but yeah Okay, yeah, so let's move on from this. I just wanted to say it's kind of like, it is kind of like weird when it makes it look like she's like so obese that it's like but, insane, but then it's, oh no, she actually just got like, t- she got like 15 centimeters But the good taller. thing we, we learned about that is that's like Yuji wasn't like, never really cared about her weight and everything. He's kind of like, we see, we see it a little bit later, but. Yeah, because he's like, a precious cinnamon roll good boy. He can't do yeah, anything I wrong. Like, I like, I like that though, like. It's bit. easy. I'm it's gonna, easy, but I'm I say do. it's easy. Like, it's. It's well, cute, and it, but it, but but it, but it factors into his uh his type of woman stuff. It's very funny, but that is kind of funny. I do, and like I feel like that's kind of a realistic thing where it's like people can have like their idealized type, but they can still be attracted and even get in a relationship with the people outside of that type. I think that's like that's like one of the thing I like the most about it. Yeah, because it is realistic. Like I've, I know people in real life who live by that creed. Yeah. And uh, what I do like, because Nobara brings her to a restaurant, and I do love her, like, loving that she had a crush on him and, like, wants to help help her help, get together with him. Yeah. It's very, like, a bro. Hey, we mad. Girl bro moment, which is which we love. We they, love they, they drag in Megumi. And it's like, is he single? He's like, he has a poster of, like, a pinup model. There's no way, a, like, a, like, a guy with a girlfriend would have that. <laughs> yeah. And the, but his, his explanation is so funny. It's like, because the girlfriend would get annoyed by it. It's like, okay. Also, his type of woman's, like, a tall woman, and they all go, like, pog face on like yeah <laughs> yeah they know exactly oh yeah but i love that they call uh um megami back that's really funny and i do love like the, oh we love tall remember that one sword art show we watched it's that the gun one where like the girl was hated that she was tall yeah and then her character in the game was like a lolly yeah because that's how her escape is i'm like yeah you gotta this, love who you are for fuck's sake <laughs> she doesn't seem to mind that she's super tall in this she seems yeah. to be kind of okay and they think oh he loves tall women. like oh shit pog champ <laughs> yeah so <laughs> It's cute. I like... Well, okay. The one thing we do have to talk about, the other thing that's really annoying is... So, Nobora has, like, an immediate reaction when she's like, you don't have a crush on him, do you? And she's like, no. Which is funny. And then she goes on thinking about it for a second. And then it's like, oh, did my heart just skip a beat? And I'm just like, fuck you. Then like, it, I don't want to entertain the no. shipping idea between Nobora and Yuji. And then it became like, oh, yeah, I'll be pissed if he gets a girlfriend before I Which do. is funnier. And I like how they kind of played off that way. Yeah. Because there's... I, I like if him and the bar are just like bros like that, I would just I'm cool with that. I love that. Yeah, I think that's a lot more like I don't know, it's more a lot more interesting than like the classic, oh, it's the the shonen triad, like the main guy's gotta get with the girl. Like that's just kind of like the worst trope <laughs> in shonen. It, it really that's <laughs> they think of like other show. I get like narrative flashbacks of, <laughs> of stuff that happened in there, but the main character ends up with like a side character girl, which is great. Yeah, that's right. I did you did that. you see that like that like Japan poll of like their like or top favorite female I did characters see this, yeah. and it's immediately like Sakura no- was like number Sakura's one. Sakura's number right? one, which is like that list is completely void because of that <laughs> on there. 
<laughs> she is like not strong female character. <laughs> she is like the worst. Um, she also, has one cool fight, and that's that only that whole like poll only had like six thousand responses. Yeah. So I thought that was really Jolene weird. was like number four. I think Maki was like number five. Yeah. When, once I saw that, only like two thousand people voted for Sakura to be number one. I was like, oh, so this is like. This is like a high school. Like, yeah. it, one high school voted on this. Yeah. And that, that, that was the poll that was shown internationally for some reason. It was t- that I completely void. I'm like, these people have never read Naruto. <laughs> yeah, it's really stupid. But I thought that was very funny. But but yeah, yeah, so I, I like this idea. I like uh, Nobura kind of serving as a wingman. They call Yuji. The, that part is actually really funny, too. They text Yuji. She's literally like, come here. And come. He's like, he's like, come. Yeah, he's like, why? She says, come. And he's like, okay, can I come? And she said, come. He just keeps saying come, <laughs> which is hilarious. Do not come. <laughs> I'm going to come. I'm going to come. <laughs> and, uh, I, and then we get the little flashback of like her in high school, like, and, like overhearing that, like, you know, they ask, like when the guys ask you what, what kind of girl he likes. And like he's like, oh, someone like her. I love her. The way she eats, like her handwriting. Yeah, which is like. And the thing that uh, the good takeaway from this is like her internal monologue is about how like she had like I don't know if she had like self loathing. Everybody judged her like on her yeah, appearance, but, but she hated every she like I would say that's like kind of a reflection of self loathing. She hated all men because of that, because of that like expectation. But one, hearing that you became a fem cell, <laughs> yeah, she became a fem cell. But hearing that Yuji like actually saw more than her in her appearance. That like changed her fucking whole world look. She downloaded a new personality that day. Before and before she had to leave, she asked. She confessed in wanting a picture with him. Yeah, uh, which I do love. <laughs> kind of love that. Yeah, she's she's a little femme cell. So also, I guess she dyed her hair because her hair is a different color. I now. guess so. Like, that also changes when you get older. <laughs> <laughs> Not that true. it cannot go from jet black. To- your hair cannot go from totally jet black to br- like I mean, strawberry blonde in six months without dying. Um, I watched Tokyo Ghoul with enough stress. You could become <laughs> from black hair to white hair instantaneously. Okay, but that's white hair. <laughs> instantaneously. Yeah, tor- get tortured enough and your hair becomes pitch white. That would be really fucking pitch white. <laughs> that would be really fucking cool if like you saw like a, a weightlifter like lifting like more than he's ever lifted and his hair is like 10 times longer and all white. We've, we've all known that when people get tortured, but, you know, from like POW camps, your hair just turns pitch white when your torture gets too much. <laughs> pitch white. <And> then- <laughs> I'll never, pre- I'll never let, let down pitch, pitch white. So, your ghoul is very funny. Um. Okay, so. Uh, but yeah, we get um the, re- the resolution to the scene kind of sad. They walk. They maybe they just walk each other to their to like the train station and, and see he each doesn't other even off. get her phone number. Yeah, but Nobara's like I. She, I gave her my phone number. I can just like you know wingman myself in there even more. Yeah. So okay, I'm gonna put this on a check in the uh, UG's asexual list, similar to Luffy, similar to SpongeBob. Okay, no, at least he is above. He's way above because Luffy doesn't you know doesn't care at all. Where he had a type of woman at least because that's a different kind of thing. Is type of woman. He says he has a type of woman, but that's like, more than Luffy ever shows. He doesn't like react when. So this woman is his type. Like he literally meets a girl who's his type. Luffy does call, and he doesn't like see past that. He just is like, oh, that was the girl that I knew in high school. Luffy will call women pretty, but he never like g- goes like drools over anything. In one of the SBSs, someone asked Oda like, hey. Luffy is like not interested in humans, but why did he like react this way when he saw Nami naked that one time? And then Oda was like, he was only doing it because the other guys were doing it, and he wanted to fit in. I mean, I can just kind of. I mean, seeing a naked person would be shocking, regardless of if it's like a. Whoa, <laughs> that's what yeah. that looks like. Even though, like, and it technically wasn't Nami; it was Bon Clay as Nami who flashed them. Which that's is true. Fucking awful, Bon Clay. We love you normally, but that's mean. <laughs> Maybe, that's a bad thing to do bon Clay. can't wait to see that live action <laughs> okay so so yeah that's kind of depressing but yeah we, then we kind of you know everybody kind of leaves and we kind of cut back to we see uh also one of my favorite girls from the first season Udahime. love oh, her they're gonna say miwa <laughs> sam was, it's like a smorgasbord for no, you sam no, 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 the trio meets you know me was a meme for us i love her because because of our meme we made for her i think we gave her more than probably the show gives her <laughs> but uh no urihime comes up it basically tells a trio that that the, you know, we have an idea there's a mole in the higher ups and there's a mole you know your level and we, we can't really i can't step on that ground at the high end yeah so we're gonna, we're gonna go find up and basically everybody is not suspicious except for mekumaru mekumaru is the only one that's like had any ounce of suspicion in him and it makes a lot of sense he's like physically separated from his, the group his puppet can extend the entire region of japan that's no insane. matter the size that's insane he is like that is a character that needs to die because he's so overpowered yeah 
And so, yeah, they, they're basically going to the basement to go find him. At the same time, we see the puppet Mechamaru sit down while Miwa, who, not shitting herself right now, but as you know from our season one <laughs> joke. She might have to really go, though. But, yeah, Mechamaru's like, I'm going to go sleep for a little bit. And she's like, you know, sits, kind of sits down with him and kind of come back at the end of that. Which, yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, he's not in the basement. He is moved. And when he, you know... And it seems like he chose the location in particular because he knew he probably had like all of his mech mecha guys. <laughs> you can hide his Ava. Look at yeah, he okay, we'll talk about that. We'll get that. there. <laughs> and so yeah, it's a false hideout. He is the traitor, but yeah, Ghetto and Mojito arrive and basically like he was like, We can just kill him now. He like has his worst is done now because he's found out. And it'll be like, No, we made a pact. A pact is very important. Once we honor the pact, then we can kill him. Yeah, apparently like even Ghetto is like terrified of the implications of breaking a, a pact. So when you have a pact with yourself, it's not as big of a deal. But when you make a pact with another person, that is like, yeah, a, like a you cannot like like bad bad things will happen if you try and break that. Yeah, and I I do, I do love that. And yeah, he wants to heal his body, so his body gets healed. He's hot. He speeds sound Sonic with a scar. He is hot. Yeah, and yeah, and the fight kind of happens where he makes yeah, the fight just starts and. He has like dozens of Mechamarus that he, he I kinda has l- going to attack. So so cool just having an army of this guy. He disappears and then we get attacked by a giant fucking mech. He's in the cockpit. He has he powered by years. Yeah, so he literally just has an Evangelion. Like it's Mechamaru funny, mode absolute. In the first <laughs> in the first episode, it didn't have the scene, but in the second episode it kind of replays the scene and it adds it. Where the mech like literally breaks out of the dam because they're at like a dam. And he breaks out of the dam, and he, like, the mouth fucking opens, just like an Ava, and it goes, oh, <laughs> like, exactly like an Ava. It goes into two mech shows, really. Like that and it Gur- does, yeah. Gurren it Gurren it, it, it and starts with Gurren Lagann later one, on. Like, one guy who got to animate that one portion was like, I'm going to animate Gurren Lagann. Like, I've been watching a lot of Gurren Lagann lately. And, and I do love the wing condition is I have to survive long enough that I can contact Gojo. Yeah, that's the only thing. So, um, Moh- well, not Mojito. Ghetto put up a, a domain veil. or a veil, which prevents them from... It's like they kind of go out of their way to explain it later. And it's like, you didn't have to. It's like, uh, veils actually block cell service too. Don't worry. Like So it's like, all right, whatever. So yeah, he, and then it kind of starts with like them getting, him getting blasted by like a giant like laser cannon. And that's basically like the he end of the like, episode. It's like Reg from Maiden Abyss. He has like a big like... The finger cannon. And then the later has a finger cannon. The middle finger cannon. I love it. Oh, uh, yeah. So episode two, what was that Oh, yeah. For, we also got a new OP. OP. Oh, yeah. I, I love the new OP. It's, it's really good. Very good. ED is very whatever. It's like the same thing as like the last the last season's like, second ED. Yeah. That was like, very boring. I'm sorry. Like when I see EDs like this, they just feel like white noise to me. Like if you're going to do like kind of a different one, like Sars on My, I feel is like the banger song. You have the, yeah. and the characters blend with the, with the background exactly. all the time. Like, if you're going to do a lot of like real photography in a in a, in a uh, ED, then you have to do something like that. You have to, to incorporate really, like, wow the characters me. in every picture of it, yeah. not just like when it's just like like random shots of like Tokyo or whatever. I'm just like, okay, I don't really care. Common stars am I W. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the second episode, which is the evening festival, so and this is basically the uh, the end of the fight slash the prologue, I guess, for the Shibuya incident. Yeah, and so yeah, we have the fight happen. And it's a lot of Ava. Ava, it's crazy. It looks really good. Tons of them. I'm gonna be a bitch about the Ava thing because, like, we just watched Ava's very fresh in our minds. Also, still, yeah, and just I have, I feel like there's like a like a disease with this current generation where anytime they do a mech, it needs to be an Ava, and it's like it's really frustrating to me because I just watched even that fucking Superman show, the new uh, My Adventures with Superman, yeah, um, where they have Tomboy Lois. I think I already complained about this too, but uh, there there are mechs in the first episode, and it's like, all right, those are just Ava. Like, you're not even trying to go out of your way to design something different. Like, I understand Ava's great; it's one of the best things ever. But whenever I see like constant references to it, especially the mech design, I'm just talking about the mech design. Yeah, I'm just like really frustrated. So everybody's got to do that. <laughs> it was really well animated, though. I can't complain. Um, but the fact that like I literally kept saying like. I mean, that's a shot from Rebuild One. I mean, the design that's a shot from episode design is 15. like very, it's just like in the same thing as like the manga. So yeah, and I don't know. I'm just being a bitch about it because I'm I'm sick of it and I've seen too much of it. But the fact that there were like literally like I kind of want someone to do. Maybe I'll do it if I give a shit. Um, 
find like the actual comparisons to the shots because there was a part when it does the kick it even does like this wow, one manga doing, pose, does, does the arm po- the freeza pose it's doing like the end of eva like when it gets crucified um the part when it like there's a part where it does like the flying kick which is very similar to the episode where shinji and asuka have to do their the rider kick yeah, the other the rider kick <laughs> um there's a part where it like jumps over a mountain and it's very similar to that scene in i think rebuild 2 when they're running really fast and the the Avas have to run faster than they've ever fasterly ran before. Um, okay, I'm just comparing. But, it, but it brings in the age-old question of what if some dude who could transform into animals was the target had of the to fight an Ava? Ava. Yeah. Which honestly, it's worth it for that because this scene was awesome. I've I'm kind of turning around a mojito. You know me. I we, did not we, like mojito. We want him to die. Still, I do want him to die, but. He was really fucking cool in his this powers scene. Are, his powers are a lot of fun, more so than Volcano Man and, and, it is and, really and fun. Wood Power. He did the fucking Gear 3 One Piece. Yeah, I, I remember talking like, oh, he's been reading One Piece. And then like, he turns, <laughs> he's like the harpy. Like, oh, he's on Punk Hazard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like, and the part where he becomes like the bird man. Or, like, the, he has like the a bird, bird head. head. He didn't have to put the bird head on. But but... He wanted it, though. <laughs> he wanted to really get into that role. But uh, so that part, that fight was really cool. Yeah. I can't, I won't lie. There's also the part where he like, loads up. He, he basically has like canisters that like have a curse like a curse canister and he shoots like one of mojito that like it hurts his soul so like he can't really regenerate nearly at like that as much or had a weight and it was awesome like he touched he took damage like he didn't get he didn't get wasn't a squash he got a lot of he did heavy yeah. hits in i was worried because like i knew that he was gonna die like there's no way there was there was a lot of death flags but he when the, when the me was are showing up a lot yeah and you remember oh, and you mentioned that all his uh all his little like Pan- when he's like when he's like in the what domain, all that? his panels were Miwa. Yeah, he was looking at like all these f- f- footage. Miwa has to Miwa. take L after L, so like yeah, <laughs> she's pretty cursed or punished rather. She's like she is the Kobeni of Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> Her and Maki are like extremely punished. They're just <laughs> very punished characters. But Maki is like the cool the it's all the cool shit though. Miwa gets to suffer and shit yeah. herself. <laughs> <laughs> two two schmucks on a podcast. You <laughs> telling that she shits herself. Shit herself. Even though she I would, love- if she was real, she would hate that. <laughs> she she hate a lot of things. Um. So, but yeah, the fight's really cool. It was just cool, and I do love. It's like, oh yeah, he probably won't use his domain expansion because that he's have the plan on Halloween, so he obviously won't use all his energy here, and he just does it because he's like, and he's like, actually, there's ten days until Halloween. I I can sleep for ten days to be recovered <laughs> that time. Which the domain expansion part was also very fucking cool. Looking. Very greatly animated, like still awesome. Which, if you case you forgot, it's just he can use the ability and not have to touch you, even though mm. all he does is just shut off the mech. Yeah, and he gets he gets jump scared, and he goes for full Gurren Lagan. He has drills. He had it literally does the crosses like the Gurren Lagan like like color scheme crosses, not the Ava ones, but like yeah, yeah. It has that that same style, and his face looks like Simone. He gets like all the the extra detail lines on his face for one shot. So it, he I, it was crazy. So he talks about this like secret uh technique because it's always a secret technique. Um, where it was something that was discovered, I think he said the Heijay, Heijay area? Okay. Or, sorry, Heijay era? Okay. I don't know when that was. <laughs> I don't know. Must have been a long time ago. Is um, it his family technique, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so basically it was like a forbidden, it was a curse technique so powerful that it was like hidden. It was, it was kept secret even so that masters couldn't tell their students. But somehow he and Miwa, I guess, know it. So it's the simple domain, um, which... So I guess the idea I, is that I did you... pop off when he did like when you watch like the, he, he inspired the, the the technique from yeah. her and everything. Like, it was oh, really cool. Yeah, let's go. It was cool to see her like as the extension of the attack, even though she wasn't there. But so I think the idea is that like you create a domain like in their domain so that you get a guaranteed hit because that's the whole point with a domain is that you just get the guaranteed hit. Yeah. Um, which is why Mojito, when he was in there, he thought he won. Yeah. But I guess he didn't win because secret technique. But he would protect, protect himself. With, yeah. his, with that with that simple domain and that's why you, try, you got to st- try to attack him from behind and all that shit and it doesn't it didn't quite work it almost worked he, gotta, he, he makes mojito explode into like a fif- 15 like frogs and rabbits and stuff which is cool and apparently you just need a fucking nuke to kill him you need to wipe off every atom like of him. he's, he's <laughs> majin Buu. he basically is majin Buu, yeah and so, okay, yeah, he, that's why i hate mojito he feels too strong yeah, so like Ghetto is like we know that Ghetto is a human. Like that's we've seen cool Ghetto thing. lose. Yeah, we we it's cool that Ghetto is human. Like I know curses can come back too, like the wood guy, but um, yeah, but yeah, fucked up by like our main character and Toto, like alone essentially. Yeah. So okay, and, and Jugo lost like immediately. 
But moving on. So yeah, basically he thinks he went to go to ghetto to get you know get the veil off at least, and then Mojito breaks through the cockpit and like, hits him a little bit. But then they had a really cool of like one of the Mekumaru just like smashing through all the hands and everything and all the, all the arms. It's really cool. Yeah, it's kind of like so he has one more simple domain left, and and he has it like in a canister for some reason. He's I guess he captured it and like he captured the cursed energy inside a vessel. So he is like running right behind it, and then of course. They do a classic uh, ambiguous finish, yeah. And then we see the scene with, with Miwa, and she's like, Mekumaru, um, I actually have a big crush on you. I hope we get, I hope we get to meet you in person one day. And I'm like, uh, you had to like, and it finished the death flags. I'm actually, you get make me go blushy washy when I see you. <laughs> the one picture on the, the on like the caption of like the mech being like you know KO'd like on the ground, it's just called End of Mekumaru. <laughs> <laughs> they know what they're fucking doing. I know. They know what they're And yeah, doing. it's really de- it's kind of depressing, but yeah, he kind of had to die, I guess. He did. He was too strong, and it's a good way to begin an arc because it was fucking hype. And that's what I want to say, like for me, a when fucking I st- mech battle in like this show yeah, is like- a mech versus bird battle, like that's what I want to say. What I what I loved about season 1 of Jujutsu Kaisen was when it realized that it was stupid and it could just do anything it wanted. What if we had these two it muscles? Hits this, <laughs> two- it, it hits this like like amazing flow state where it just does like incredible stupid things and that's i feel like we begin this shibuya arc in that flow state already i'm so excited what do we had our two two of our main characters fight these muscle bound curse guys that have a slow curse that kill you when it reaches like your brain or whatever the rose the rose curse has to leave Uh, but what if we use their brotherly bond against them to like hold one hostage (laughs) from our main characters i forgot about that that was great i love that fight like Ah, oh, it's so good. It's it just when it when Jujutsu Kaisen starts firing on all cylinders, it just does not let go. And that's like even the flashback, even the movie, like the flashback is so good. <laughs> yeah. Fucking fun. What about a guy who just had a gun? <laughs> <laughs> the guns are more powerful than any curse could possibly be. Just murder Gojo like a hundred times. So that really wraps up the Mekamaru uh stuff. He's presumably dead. Yeah. I'm sure he'll come back because it's an anime. No, he's dead. He, they don't want to show a dead student. He's, he's just going to be dead. They've shown so much worse. <laughs> the one, the fucking Jujutsu Kaisen movie, they showed like a bloody unless, crushed bullies inside unless, the locker. Unless he downloaded his brain into one of his puppets or something. Yep, that's how he's going to come back. You fucking, that's the, that's the you only figured way. figured it out, Sam. You you got it. That's the only way. But He's definitely going to do that. I don't know. Meanwhile, I gave him too many death flags that he's going to keep him in the grave. No, that's totally what's going to happen. And it's going to it's gonna be perfect because it's basically a status quo reset because that's what he was before. Well, now he has, he has to like, preserve his body. Yeah, which is more interesting. Yeah. If he do that, we'll see. It is very similar to Robot from uh, Invincible in but that way. Do you... Did, did we saw the body of robot before in Invincible, didn't we? Yeah, we saw the us- the user. Yeah. yeah, he uh he comes alive or he swaps uh Yeah, we've seen him. I'm trying season. to I'm trying not to spoil anything. Have yeah, you seen him in the first season? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. And then we get, then we kind of get the prologue, I guess the Shibuya prologue of like the Halloween thing of uh People be- pretty rowdy. It looks like a lot of rowdy behavior in in Tokyo. <laughs> the party, there's a Halloween parties going on. I saw the ghost face mask, which if do you know about the legal legal uh stuff around the no. ghost face mask so the mask anybody can use it's, it's oh. the mask is like the thing you can use but i think the name like ghost face and everything is like you know that's really to the scream franchise it's a weird legal thing where the mask itself like design is like anybody can use it they must have just like used the mask and it was probably already a created thing that kind of like otherwise like yeah, there's a weird. I I, I could see. It's how like, they yeah, would it's like they like... picked that mask from like a Halloween store, and yeah. since that was like you know something they like didn't have because that was the point of the movie was just like, something you buy at a Halloween store. Mm-hmm. So they did that. So yeah, you just see that in the show. You see some weird. You see bunnies. You there's see... a lot of like little references. I saw to... purple shocker shocker grunts from Common Rider. That was really fun. I like I like that. Um, there was kind of like a Wonder Woman and like a Superman, uh, but the colors were all wrong. So yeah, so basically a giant veil. Like this bear comes in there, locks all regular people in there. Sorcerers can kind of come and go, as as we've seen in there. And basically, we have the, the big other big thing was that there seems to be like a creature inside the subway because it sucked, sucked up, up like most yeah. of the people. So a lot of people in one area, and like one person is told, a group of people were told like they want Gojo to come in there. Yeah, and like yeah, something told somebody or some people that Gojo is required, and Gojo does appear. But we have teams set up. We have Megumi. We have Nanami, and we have the guy we saw in the sewers, I believe, which his name is like uh, Takuma Ino. He's the guy with the beanie. Yeah. 
and yeah, he tries to he tries to mansplain a lot to Megumi. Yeah, that was the thing with the cell phone. It's like, all right, uh, like you don't need to like explain everything. Like it's fine. Then we have uh Nabara, we have Maki, and we have one of the ZNs, and uh, now Bito ZN. So I don't think we. I'm not sure if we saw. Maybe we saw him in a flashback with like Maki stuff, but I don't. I don't think we know much about him. So at I all. always mix up the what is um. N- uh, bu- 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 Megami's what his last name yeah what's his last name Fushigu- Fu- ah, Fushiguro but okay. remember his dad was like kicked out of the ZN clan and okay. that's why he doesn't have that last name that's he- right so I just want to he's related sure. but he's not like a member yeah him and him and Maki are from the same clan then yeah and Mai my- and Mai that's right yeah well yes. my, my and Maki are sisters yes. that one's easy to remember yes so, I thought yeah. there was a third clan or not a third I thought there was like another one <laughs> and I was mixing them up there could be but hey the, the ZNs are the most important ones out of everything they're yeah. the assholes and uh, then we have Panda, and I guess a new character named Atsuya Kusabkabe. Yeah, which they're on like uh, cleanup duty, basically. Yeah, anytime any Gojo's mess is essentially what they're going to be doing. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, I'm interested. To see, I thought Panda was going to go there with the principal because that was like his dad, essentially. But now we got a new character with Panda. Maybe we'll see his sister. Yeah, who else is? Uh, we didn't see Yuji, did we? No, we did not see Yuji at all. Who's probably with his bro or something, or he's on the subway. Maybe he's on a date with the girl. Or he can't be with his bro. That's right. I mean, casually, not like on a mission. He's not on this mission. <laughs> he's probably on this mission. No, he, I, right, right we now we haven't anyway. seen him yet. But yeah, we haven't he's seen probably him on this mission. Everyone's maybe. here. Everyone's I mean, he could bumble his way as as he could be on a mission, but the main character's gonna bumble his way into the main incident somehow. That's true. And so yeah, they, they basically just keep guard. Gojo clean up Gojo's mess. There's no signal inside, so once you're in there. You're trapped. And I'm like, man, is is that girl from high school that UG went to high school with going to be trapped in there? Probably. Is I she... mean, what else would she be? That'd be really good if they just introduce her and she doesn't come back until like through season four. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if like the uh, the dude from Zero is going to show up there in this movie. That'd be a or lot in this of arc. fun. I forget his name. I, I, I haven't, I haven't seen him in a while. Name, so yeah. I don't, I, I, I forgot. I haven't rewatched really that movie. I need to rewatch that movie. Like, will he show back up? I mean, there's a uh, Togi, who's like the only member of like the Panda team, Maki team that hasn't in, uh, in there, who didn't get promoted. Mm-hmm. Like Mai's team could show up. Well, I don't know, but I'm excited to see because like I said, all I've heard is hype around this arc. So I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, I'm, I am too. So the I'm way very... that the little Shibuya scene began, actually, it it shows uh, kind of the aftermath of it. It looks like there's a bunch of like police tape and police it's, cars it's still there, and abandoned. there's no one there. Yeah, it's totally abandoned. So. That's really interesting. It makes it seem like uh, all the characters are going to probably get f- maybe shuffled into a different dimension or something crazy. Or everybody just in a meat grinder. Or, cause everybody gets sucked underground, so everybody's probably going to end up in the subway at some point, I'm guessing. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So you can have some close quarter combats. So I'm just like looking. It's like someone made an entire article about like the uh, Ava references and everything. I'm sure. Uh, okay, just so before we... Uh, we reconvene later we 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 end this i do i want to do like a little kind of like who is who's on each side like who is everyone here so that i i have a better idea in my brain of what to expect okay so we have right now for we know gojo is in there yeah so we know yeah that's the last thing i think we see is gojo entering we have megumi we have uh takuma who's the the beanie guy and we have uh, nanami there was like the one squad that's one team that's one team together then we have nabara Ma- uh, Maki and the now be- now Bito Zen the Zen Zen guy, and then we have Panda and the Kusakabe. So presumably we we're gonna have um and then Yu- and then Yuji and they say I think Mei Mei it's also prop I think in the area. I mean, yeah, they, okay. They, so... they mentioned Mei Mei and they mentioned did he mention Toto? It's also in the area. It feels like Mei Mei and Toto will definitely be in, in this. Okay, Mei Mei definitely because she's also in the OP. Was... Yeah. Okay, so. Those are the good guys. We know that U- Yuji, Yuji must might be, be with, yeah. He must be around. Um, is there another? I mean, he guess he could be with Gojo. I said there's a guy from Zero. We still have. He can show up. There's there's um, there's there's, there's, there's Yuji. We have there's Togi so many can characters. show up. There's so many. The fucking whole characters. my squad can show up. Like, um, like I said Utahime. Utahime. We don't know if uh if she's confirmed to be part of this. She could probably see her showing up. Miwa could show up. Miwa could show up and do nothing. Shit. I, I said there's a bunch of teachers that we've seen a little bit of. Toto's teacher could just show up in a motorcycle again, instig- make somebody turn to the bad side again, and then just peace out by saying, but that's just a theory. Don't turn anything evil. <laughs> no, that was fucking um, 
May May said that. No, 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 no. That was no. That was Toto's teacher. Oh, was it a teacher? Yeah, she came up to to Goto who was sitting down <laughs> sulking, and she says, "Yeah, that, you could you could probably do something to resurrect people or say protect people, but you, I just, I'm just saying." <laughs> what was that meme that was like? Like, all right, I hope this didn't like irrevocably change <laughs> the course of your life. Good talk. <laughs> Good talk. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not to blame for anything you do. <laughs> Sign this contract. I thought I'm, that was May May. I'm misremembering. No. no. It was not. Okay, so yeah, she definitely should come back. And then for the baddies, we know, obviously, Ghetto, Mojito, we've got all, Jugo. All, all the demon squad, essentially. So, we, who, so let's squad. run through. So we have Jugo, we have Tree Guy, which is like Ita- Cuttlefish. Ita- Itami. We have <laughs> the Cuttlefish. Um, and then... Um, uh, incel Ed- Eldrick, El- Edward inc- Elric. In- that's really hard to say. Incel Edward El- inc- Edward Elric. Yeah, it's, that, that one ca- <laughs> child that showed up at the end of that one, the first season. That's what I was going to say. Um, yeah, is that character going to... The character that showed up on the beach... I can see a bunch of evil. Are we missing one more? Is there one more of the Jugo tree? I think that's all of them. No, I'm pretty sure you got them. Okay. And that, uh, and then maybe, maybe a ZN show up there to be assholes. I can see that for Maki's arc because she's with a ZN right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I that's all I can think of. Let's see, bring in. I'm trying to think of any other or any other jobbers that I can remember for, that were brought in at the end of that that ran away after the teacher showed up. So. Okay, yeah, I guess that's that's all I can think of. So, but like about this event, so like pivotally, we know they weren't aware of it in advance because that was the point. Yeah, they're, and they're of, obviously uh, targeting like Gojo to, to probably try to kill him or fridge him or something. I'm I'm imagining they're trying to seal him away. That's always my brain. I feel like it, there has to be like sealing away Gojo. They're gonna have a demon fridge to to, to him to look look at infinity all the time, so he can't. Do <laughs> they anything. put a mirror in front of his face and it just stun locks him. How will you? <laughs> Okay, Gojo, how you escape the tekahedron? <laughs> um, <laughs> and he can't. All right. Um, I think that, yeah, that's like, I'm that, very excited. I, this is like, this is like an arc where people have a map of like where all the characters are. Yeah. The- okay. That's not, another thing I wanted to say because it's set in like a really densely packed rural or uh, ur- urban area. It made points to like say what streets people are on, and like I feel like they also inserted a lot of like local. Uh, like they had the the what's hot, what's the, the, the dog's the, name? Yeah, uh, the, the, they had the the loyal Sheeb statue. Yeah, the, the Sheba statue. They and had I, like this really weird like kind of art um like hallway. The one oh the the, the one oh eight building. No, no, no. It was like it, where no, no. They also have that one. Oh though. yeah, yeah, because yeah, you can see that from Shibuya. Shibuya. Um no, but they had like this cool like little alleyway that's where Maki was. Um. Yeah, so Which like, is interesting. I feel like that's probably just like a place nearby. I, I know people made maps of this before. Like, where is it very similar to Kamara and Arc, where people just have maps of our where they are at? Which is what or, I love. I love that. That's one thing I love about One Piece arcs. There's always like Oda has to draw like all these maps of like, okay, this character's here. It makes the like the event feel huge. It yeah. makes it makes the the sense of scale really feel evident. A lot of characters they're probably cooler than like you know the. Uh, like what Dress Rosa did, where like half the characters are like, eh, I don't care what this, what these guys are doing, but yeah, and Dress Rosa kind of, I'm not, we're just talking about Dress Rosa now, but Dress Rosa kind of does that like a little later, where some of the better One Piece arcs, they like, Oda early on is like, all right, here's the fucking, here's the country, like, here's what the country looks like. Luffy's here, like, Zanji's here, <laughs> Zolo is, no, and these guys are like. underground, <laughs> yeah, there was some of that, yeah, it just wasn't, I mean, Dress Rosa is not my favorite arc, but. Frankie just This isn't a One Piece arc podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's coming. <laughs> hey, but uh, we'll, we'll, that'll be a long time before we can discuss it about that. Yeah. I got to reread. But uh, no, but I'm excited to, to watch more of this. Hey. Me too. It's very we're, good. I'm about to do it right now. Hell I hope, yeah. hope that episode, the third episode, doesn't have like a terrible cliffhanger. Well, we have three and four we have to watch right now. No, we have, we have uh, three, four, five. Okay, three, four, and five. Okay, so we'll, we see, we'll see how it watch. goes, how the arc goes, because this kind of was perfect of like two parts and then like a prologue. So we'll yeah, see. It, it worked. It worked really well for us. It's hard to, to plan the episodes out when we don't know the, the one of us yeah. don't know the arcs ahead of time. Um, and it's also just kind of relying on like when can we meet up? Yeah, because like, life is we, we, life is becoming so busy. It's also nice to have episodes build up so we can just do these in one go. But yeah. it pains us because we want to watch this shit after watching that first season or the first part of the season was like awesome. That like mm-hmm. it pained us to wait. I hate watching only one episode of Jujutsu Kaisen though. I need to watch at least two. It, it one feels like it goes. How do we do quick. it? How did we know. do that first season? Well, that's because we watched. We would sit down, record, watch an episode, sit down and record. Like we would watch like four episodes a night, but we would record in between each. I one. know, but how did we do that? I don't know. That was, that was pain. 
especially that first half of that first season, which that which I talked, mean. I actually talked to a, a bunch of a couple people about that, and they they, they just dropped it the first that first the show after like that first half of that season. I'm like, <sighs> I I don't blame you, but that but once you get that second half, it's like peak. It's so hard to recommend. Be like, all right, the first two and a half hours are not going to be enjoyable. I mean, the first arc is not so much. I mean, you can find you can find some enjoyment in like this in the the Junpei arc because it's very funny. The, the joke you, of that there is enjoyment to be found. I mean, like the quality has always been there, and you get the meet like the animation you have to meet nanami who is like carries the the, the yeah. art of that if you can get to nanami i feel like you're pretty set yeah like it's really that first few episodes do it for Before, him i hated the first episode of oh PJK. yeah that was a, that was a very weak uh i remember very... trying to watch it before we even like did our whole podcast thing and like <laughs> just being like this is not a show that i want to watch <laughs> like it just every Every angle of it, I was like, "This is not at all." And then the the grandfather turning over to die like sealed my fate. <laughs> we, I, I love like, that. That is the stupidest. Thing I've ever seen. And then I saw Maki. And I'm like, I'm gonna do it for her. <laughs> okay. Um. I think. Uh. I think I'm ready to watch more. Yeah. I think. I think that's everything. Should I uh plug up? Uh. Um, <laughs> I plug it up. Um. The hole inside Mechamaru's uh fucking the plug suit. <laughs> yeah, his plug suit. Uh. Thank you all very much for listening. If you like that, leave a comment. Like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, you can also follow the podcast on Twitter with me and Jim's. X. Who can? Uh, me and Jim's uh, handles on there as well. You can also They're called Zandals now. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then I uh, and there's also I think that's, I think that's it. That's it. Oh, okay, so uh, if you want to give us a tip, go to Patreon. Tip to and, tip and get your name shouted out on a jo- Jokaka JoJo episode. And with that, we will see you next episode. See you next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.